guys. This video is going to be unscripted, so I'm just going to let you guys have it. Your boys finally did it. It took a couple of weeks longer than I wanted to. Uh, dodging spoilers wasn't as hard as I thought it would be, except one crucial spoiler. It didn't spoil it, but the implications were there. I'm not going to be talking about spoiler in this video. If I do, I'm definitely going to warn you, or the second half of this video will be spoiler. You're going to get a warning. I'm not going to say anything crazy, so if that's what you're wondering, if you haven't seen this movie yet. And the movie I'm talking about is the myth, the legend, the enigma, Demon Slayer, Mugen Train. This movie is what I like to call a... Uh, a good fucking movie. I don't know how else to fucking put it. It's a good movie. Did I like it better than Dragon Ball Super Broly? I am a biased asshole. And no. I did not like it more than Dragon Ball Super Broly. Pretty damn fucking close though. Pretty damn. It's up there. In terms of anime. This is what we're talking about. You know what I mean? So in terms of like the movie contents. What they did was. They didn't write, up, they didn't write this story specifically for it to be a movie. So, when I went into this, I was expecting it to feel like an extra, extra, just a bunch of episodes put in one, just mixed together, because this is uh, adapting the manga, so I was expecting it to feel like an anime uh, arc, just condensed, you know what I mean, right? No no, no intros or outros, just, just, just every episode together, and uh, that's not what I got. It felt like it was made for. It felt like it was made to be a movie. It was amazing. It was it, the, the way they pulled it off. They did a great job not making it feel like a TV anime, which is something that I can't say the same for other anime movies like My Hero Academia. Um, two heroes, not the other one. Uh, what the fuck was the other one? Heroes Rising. That that's different. But two heroes felt like a extra long anime episode. Heroes Rising. They fixed that, so I'm not gonna like shit on them, but. That's just an example. Uh, two heroes felt like an uh, extra long anime episode. Nothing crazy happened. But Demon Slayer. My thing is like, Ufotable episodes already look like movies. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're really, they really don't have to do much. But the thing is, they do do much. They do a lot. <laughs> it looks fucking gorgeous. And um, this is coming from someone who's seen Fate Heaven's Fill. Now, if I'm going to compare the properties, because I've seen Fate Heaven's Fill... Um, Demon Slayer is great, but I don't think the animation comes close to Fate. I think Fate is just another level. Because it's a different series, know what I mean? It's different art style. Demon Slayer does what it does best, and that's being unique, alright? Yeah, Fate has all the fancy CGI and shit, but look at Demon Slayer, though. The heavy ink, the fucking eyes, the pupils look like they came straight out of fucking Ushio and Tora. The way he draw the way the eyes are drawn, the shape, the fucking, uh, how they have angles. It looks just like Ushio and Tora, and I fucking love that. Um, that's another Supernatural series. It's, it's older, 90s. Fucking watch Ushio and Tora. But this ain't about Ushio and Tora. It's about Demon Slayer, boy. So, this movie had everything you're looking for in Demon Slayer. Comedy, which was really fucking funny. Um, a lot of people might not find it funny if you're not uh, used to anime comedy. It, it might fly over your head. Uh, if you're just watching it from the outside in, but it's funny. Um, Inosuke, not even Inosuke. Fucking Rengoku was hilarious at the beginning. <laughs> when they first... Oh, shit, he, he was a funny character. I'm not gonna say anything. You know, I don't wanna see, you know. But the comedy was definitely there. That I'm not even gonna get to the action. The storytelling itself was god like The flashbacks... They make you care for a character that you haven't seen a lot of, and that's great. Even characters, that's something that Demon Slayer has always been good at. A character could uh, literally appear on the episode and die on the same episode, and they know how to make you care about the character by showing certain flashbacks before their death. That always isn't the case though. Sometimes they don't need to, like if it's a hero, you don't need to see the flashback because they're not gonna die most likely, they're the main character. But you learn shit about these characters that you didn't know before. Um, you get some insight. Something that you're probably not going to get from season two or season one. So this movie is definitely essential for you to watch if you intend to go to season two. Definitely. Um, in terms of the animation itself. I, uh, we already know Demon Slayer's animation is godlike. So I'm going to be comparing the movie animation to the animation on the show I guess. 
So it is a movie, so the Mugen Train is CGI, which isn't bad. It looks great, actually, because it's a fucking train. It's not an organic being. <laughs> so there was really, there was, you couldn't go wrong with that. Um, the action scenes were fucking insane. They were crazier than the show. I'm not going to lie. I feel like on certain action scenes on a, on a show, people were overhyping it, especially uh, the final battle with... Uh, Against Rui, I felt like people overhyped that scene and they cried and shit. Eh. And let me tell you about this movie though. If you're talking about this is something that season one never gave us: fast, pace, destructive fights. I did not think Demon Slayer was gonna get destructive, but it fucking got destructive. <laughs> Very destructive. Um, more destructive than they had the right to. Everything was super exaggerated. Because if you don't know about Demon Slayer, uh. All that shit, the water breathing, the water and the fire, yeah, that shit isn't even there. Yet, they use enough force to basically, might as well just fucking be there if you're just gonna blow up the whole area, right? Like, holy shit. The power, the power scaling just went up on this movie out of nowhere, and I just wasn't prepared. Um, <laughs> especially for the last battle. That caught me off guard. I did not expect the last battle to happen. After everything was said and done, I thought shit was done until a final battle happened. And when the final battle happened, the final battle was just... It was a final fucking fight, all right? It's what you needed on an anime movie's final fight, and it was fucking gorgeous. What else can I possibly say? Watch Demon Slayer and Mugen Train. You have to watch season one first. Don't watch season two after you watch season one without watching the movie. If you don't, you're not going to understand what's happening, and uh, characters are going to be missing, and you're not going to know why. Unless you read the manga, then you know, yeah, then you're pretty much good at that point. But, yeah, I feel bad for whoever's watching it on Tanami and didn't watch the fucking movie, because when that shit comes on, they're not going to know anything that's happening. That happened on one of the Tanami shows. Sword Art Online, there was a movie that happened that's canon to the story, and then when a fucking show came back, you had to watch the movie, but no one watched the movie. So they were just so fucking confused as to what was going on, and it was hilarious. But I don't want that to happen to people that uh, that's watching Demon Slayer, because Demon Slayer is just something that should be experienced. You wanna know something crazy? There's some, there's, there's people that don't watch anime, that most likely don't really like anime, that are watching Demon Slayer. Can you fucking believe that? I fucking can't. This is, this, this anime isn't normal. It's not normal. I don't know what else to tell you. It's, did it beat, I don't think it beat Pokemon in, in the box office. Did it beat Pokemon in the box office? I, I think it did. I think it beat Pokemon in the box office. I'm going to assume that it beat Pokemon in the box office. If it didn't, uh, feel free to correct me in the comment section below. But I'm pretty sure it beat Pokemon in the fucking box office. That would make Demon Slayer the number one anime movie in the world. I don't know about Japan. They have a lot of anime movies over there. And there's probably some crazy shit that I don't know about. That probably dropped. And it's probably number one. Because I'm pretty sure Pokemon. Now Pokemon was different. Pokemon. Pokemon. I don't know. Pokemon did something to kids, bro. It was just something about Pokemon. You want to know what it is? I felt like since it was anime. Um, a lot of people. They weren't exposed to that. They're used to Marvel shit. You know. Uh, X-Men, Wolverine, you know, they, they've never seen anyone become a Super Saiyan in front of them at the, like, early 90s. they never seen the art style itself, the super detailed art style that anime has, and the unique eyes and stuff like that. It's different, and it's fucking awesome. I think that's the main reason why Pokemon was just such a hit in the West. Why it was a hit in Japan, I think that's for a completely different reason, <laughs> but it still was highly successful in Japan. Possibly more than it was in, I even know if I can even say it was more than it was in America. Because the shit that was happening was not normal. The shit that was happening was not natural. It was not natural. Parents were actually afraid for their children. Because they were just obsessed with these fucking monsters killing each other. But, this is something different. This is like a new era. This is like basically two decades later. Technology has advanced and Demon Slayer shows that very well. It uses both 2D and CGI masterfully, mixing them both together like other anime. You know what I'm talking about. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. Other anime. But, uh... Yeah, bro. Watch Demon Slayer Mugen Train.